let's go and uh, through some Java basics. I'm not going to go over variables or functions or, or methods and in, in chunks. I'm just going to write a bunch of code, explain as I go, and then as you follow along, constantly, um, I'll be explaining a lot of the basic stuff. So you'll you'll eventually get it. So we're we're going to jump right into arrays and array lists, which are so because this is an entry video, I'm going to be using Eclipse. Go to eclipse.org, click on download, download the 64-bit or whatever version you need. Run it and install all the packages that it asks you to. So once you download Eclipse, um, this is a, essentially what the interface is going to look like. You're going to get a prompt screen, all that good stuff. I've disabled mine to save time. I'm going to go ahead and go to File, New, and what we want to do is we want a Java project. And I'm just going to name this project Play because that's what we're going to be doing, playing with the code, and I'm going to hit Finish. So once that's there, if I right click on this and I go to show in and then I go down to Explorer, System Explorer, you can see it actually created a folder called play within my EXO uh, directory, which is the username of my computer, Eclipse Workspace. Let's go inside of here on source, right click, go to new, and we're going to have to create a new package. And the package is what stores all of your different text files or classes. And I'm just going to name this play package so we can distinguish what it is. Um, and let's just start with our first block, our first kind of code is I'm going to right click, go to new class. And this is going to be just the class for us to play around with and learn about arrays. So I'm going to turn on main here. And um, main is a function, or a method rather, inside of Java that automatically runs whenever you run your code. And then the name of this class is just going to be play. I'm going to hit fit. Now, for me, I have my text pretty big so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, and the way that you do that is you go to Window, Preferences, General. Editors. Text Editors. Sorry, Preferences, General, Appearance, Colors and Fonts. Then we want to go off to the side here and expand Java and go to text editor here and then edit. I have mine set to 24. Let's say 36, right? And I hit OK. And then I apply that. You can see it's considerably bigger. Maybe I'll just leave it that big for the video and I'll do our test list for now. Uh, we're not going to be stepping through our outliners. So let's decrease that as well. Let's take a look at uh, creating a very simple program, and it can um, log the number of hours. And this is things that I was uh, just simple programs I was doing for masters in Java. Is just kind of writing these very simple applications. And I think the best way to sort of learn to code is to think of a problem and then just sort of write something around it. So inside of Java. Um, we, let's take a look at just some basic stuff, like how do you create a variable? If I have a variable, it's just a temporary storage place for numbers or video games, game objects, and stuff like that. If I want to make a, a, a variable that is, um, un, you cannot change the value within it, we mark it as final. And then integer is the, there or any whole, no, whole number that's not a decimal. And then what you do for good programming is anything that's a final um, variable or unchanging, you want to put it in caps. So whoever the other programmer is. Then we're going to comment that line by two forward slashes and just type in number. Alright, let's make an array. And this is going to be an array that's going to store the number of hours our employees have worked. Hours. Equals, and we want to make this a new element of that. So int. Now what's interesting about this we're going to use our employee here. So I double click that and I'm going to paste it in there. So this array is currently holding three slots. So I'm going to pause the video and open up Photoshop so you can see what this looks like. What exactly means. If you recall that we made an array that was of type integer and we called it hours. And inside of that, we put our employees. 
variable, which was holding the integer 3, final integer, which means we can't change that. What happens is, in memory, it creates three boxes. One, two, let's say employee one only worked one hour, and this one worked two hours, and this one worked three hours. The way we access this is by this slot is zero. This slot literally is being referenced by the number zero. So if we ever want to access the number one, we have to use the zero, one, or two to reference that. This is important as we move forward because um, a lot of times people can get confused because they'll type the number one assuming that they're going to get the first slot when really it's zero. Let's mark that. So this is an array of hours. Let's create a um, scanner object which allows us to re receive input from our user. So we type in the word scanner and I'm just going to call mine keyboard equals new scanner. And then what we're passing is system input. Now you'll notice there's a red line here. And the reason is because we haven't imported in the scanner, pa scanner package. So if you highlight over it, we get our little yellow box that pops up. And it will do it for us if we click on it. And now you can see we no longer have that. I'm also going to type in sys out and then hold control and spacebar. And it auto populates this line. I'm going to prompt the user to enter number of hours. Worked by, and then a plus sign to indicate that we're going to append something to our string here. So I'm going to give myself a little space. And what I'm doing is I'm going to copy this. And we should get the name, the number three, because it's currently holding the number three. I'm going to hit enter here. I'm going to hit plus because it's just kind of we can fit it on the screen. And then I'm just going to do a space and then employees. It's a good idea to run your code um, ever so often just to check to see that things are working. So I'm going to press it up here. And you can see here that errors exist, right? So I'm going to hit cancel and say, OK, well, what's the problem here? Well, if we highlight over this, you can see we have an error. It says change type of hours to int, right? And um, I purposely left this in here to show you that it'll auto detect it. And if you click on it, you'll see it corrected our issue with our array. So when con constructing an array, you put the data type, two brackets, the name of whatever you want to name your array, signifying that it's a new member of that, and we're creating a new object, the data type, and then whatever the size is. I could have typed three in here, but it's a little more impressive to use a variable. Um, so let's go ahead and press play again. Enter the number of hours worked by employees. I'm actually going to drag my console to the bottom our code running in tangent and so by three employees so I'll hit one enter two it actually exits the, the the code now what's happening here is we're not actually storing this inside of the scanner object we're just typing a bunch of numbers so let's go ahead and um, start saving these off into our variable so what we can do is out and let's do employee one first and then let's use our um, our banner object this keyboard I'm gonna go ahead and copy that to save inside of a variable uh, to store an hours zero the number of uh, employee or um, the hours of employee one. So I'm going to do hours. So board dot next, and then you have all these options of different types that it can take in. We're just going to do an int because that's our data type. And let's test this out. Hours entered by. Four, do one for short. Plus, and I'm going to copy hours zero here. Paste that. 
Let's save that and press play. File that. So employee one has 35 hours entered by for employee one. We should space this out. 35. Let's run that one more time. So this hours entered for employee one is 24. So you can see that we stored 24 in slot zero. Um, what you can do, and I'll leave that off on the code, is figure out how you store it in slot one and two on your own.